Hey there, it's Brie, and today we are back in my bedroom filming. It's been a while since I filmed in here, but I forgot how comfortable it is, so you may see this more often. So today we are going over my November TBR, and I was trying to think if I wanted to do any sort of theme for November. I mean, obviously there are some Thanksgiving novellas that I want to read, and I might do a separate video of that, but I thought for my November TBR, I think I want to concentrate on clearing out my Kindle. So a few years ago, was it two, three? A couple years ago, um, I did a Kindle Clear Out Readathon, and I thought about bringing that back, but then readathons are a lot of work when you're when you create them, a and when you host them, it's just it's a lot and it's overwhelming. So I don't think I want to do that, but I thought I would do like a mini Kindle Clear Out situation in November for myself. I thought it would be a good time since we're at the end of the year, and then maybe sometime in the beginning of the year of next year or, or December or something, I want to do some sort of video where maybe we go like Kindle Unlimited shopping together. So I thought now would be a good time to start clearing that out and clearing out my Kindle. So what I did was I went through my Kindle, I went through all of the books that are on my Kindle, and I picked the top books that I want to read. And I thought I would share them with you today because 99.9% .9 of the books on my Kindle I either got for free or they're on Kindle Unlimited. I will indicate down below whether it's on Kindle Unlimited or not, or like how much it is if it's not on Kindle Unlimited. So keep in mind though that things come and go on Kindle Unlimited fairly quickly or fairly often I should say, and prices change fairly often. So although it may say Kindle Unlimited down below in my description box, it may not be anymore. So unless you're, you know, if you watch this later, it may not be up to date. But if you watch this, you know, when I drop it, then it should be up to date. All right, so I have 10 books that I want to read. The first one is very exciting. It's called The Forgotten Phantom by Katherine Ann Kingsley. One of my friends was reading this book. Actually, a few of my friends, I think, have read this book. This is a Phantom of the Opera retelling, and I think it's a romance between the Phantom and Christine. I could be wrong, but that was the impression that I got. So one of the, one of the issues with me doing TBR videos is the fact that I don't normally read the synopses for the books that I read because I like going in without really knowing what the books are about. So when I do TBRs, it can be a little difficult, but I will read some of the synopses for these unless I have a vague understanding of what I think they are. Um, you can feel free to correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments if you want. But yeah, The Forgotten Phantom sounds really good. I kind of at some point... I don't know. So I was thinking about doing like a Phantom of the Opera retelling reading vlog type thing where I find as many Phantom of the Opera romance novel retellings and read them, but then I was afraid I'd get burnt out on it. And it's one of my favorite stories. So I don't know. That may or may not come. Let me know down below if you want that. But this one, I don't really, so I know a few of my friends have talked about this, but I don't remember what they thought about it. So it should be pretty interesting. And then I want to read Reverie and Redemption by Cadence Snow. This one is influenced by Steph from Novelty Corner. She read this one recently, and as she was reading it, she actually messaged me and was like, hey, I think you'd really like this book. And I want to say it's paranormal and it's a wide shoes romance, but she really liked it, and her and I have very similar taste. So I'm pretty excited to read this one. I think she really liked it. I'm pretty sure this may have been an author that was at an event that Steph went to. I think so because I think she has a really pretty copy of this book. I'm going to look it up really quick because I don't fully remember what she <laughs> said it was about. I just know that if some, like usually if a good friend of mine who I have similar taste to or who knows my taste well, like directly recommends me a book, like goes out of their way to message me about a book, I usually get pretty excited about it. And I'm always very grateful, of course. It's so nice to have that. Oh yeah, so the very first line is, I'm in love with three men. I'm just not sure if they're a dream come true or my worst nightmare. So it sounds like it might be a dark romance. It began with hearing voices, another step on my study descent into madness. It was inevitable considering the whole town hated me and I was the loneliest person on the planet, so I have a very lonely heroine. I didn't really blame them. Everyone who got close to me ended up in the hospital. I'd be suspicious of me too, when three distinct alluring voices, alluring voices in her head. Um, gorgeous men, I really started to question everything I knew. They called themselves dream walkers. Oh, that's what it is. I'm pretty sure it, that's, that might be why she recommended this book to me, is because we both read um, The Nightmare, and he is like, it's a romance between a woman and the personification of her nightmares. So I think that's why she recommended it to me because it gave her nightmare vibes. Ooh, I'm excited about that. I want to read Muscles and Monsters. It's Leviathan Fitness, book number one by Ashley Bennett. So this series is one that I feel like I've seen on Instagram. Like a lot of people were sharing this author's like posts and stuff about this series. I want to say I think the second or third book in the series has come out because the author was promoting it quite a bit and I ended up following the author because this book just sounds really good. And I think a couple of my friends have read this book and this series and said, 
said that they really liked it. So obviously it's a monster romance and has something to do with fitness, I don't really know, but I love the cover of this book. And the author seems really nice too. Oh. <laughs> So apparently Leviathan Fitness, which is the name of the series, I believe, yeah. It's known for monsters, muscles, and woven who rescue damsels in distress. That is so great. What a cute concept. It says, after a wedding cake catastrophe, local decorator Tegan finds herself being helped by a solid wall of fur and fangs named Atlas. Oh, I love the name Atlas. She's never met anyone like him, and she finds herself enamored by his wolfish charm. After their sweet encounter, Atlas invites her to his gym anytime she needs his cake lifting services. Tegan decides that instead she wants to lift cakes herself. She signs up for a membership with Leviathan Fitness, determined to build her strength. Oh, you know what? I kind of like, like, as long as we don't get into, like, diet culture and body shaming and all of that stuff, I actually love the idea of a romance between the main character who's on, like, their fitness journey and like a wellness journey and then maybe their personal trainer. I like the idea of that because there is such an intimacy and closeness when you're working with a personal trainer. And I also feel like, you know, that's something you can bond over and an activity you can do together. So I'm actually pretty excited about this. And the fact that it's paranormal and has a werewolf, I'm, I'm, I'm into it. I'm excited. Okay. And then of course, oh my gosh, I can't believe I haven't read this one yet. And I may actually read it before November. It may actually be my next read, but I'm putting it out my November TBR anyway. It's Northern Stars by Brittany C. Cherry, or Brittany Cherry, I think. I think she dropped the C. This is Brittany Cherry's latest release. I did pre-order it, so I actually already have it. I think I actually have, I know I have the ebook. I think I also pre-ordered the audiobook as well, so I will probably end up listening to this on audio. I don't know what it's about, and I'm going to be completely honest, I don't really want to know what it's about. It is part of a series, but it's one of her series that is very loosely connected, so you can definitely read it as a standalone, and I've read every other book that Brittany C. Cherry has come out with except for like one or two obscure ones but I've read all of her like pretty much all of them and this one is her newest release so I definitely want to read it very excited about it I have I think it's a small town romance probably grumpy sunshine or at least has a grumpy hero these are all like speculations I'm not really sure because I haven't read the synopsis for it but I definitely do want to go into this one without knowing anything about it because I like to do that with authors who I know I love because I trust them and I don't need to know what the synopsis is to read their books because I love their writing anyway and then another book I want to read is Brant's Return by Mia Sheridan I actually do have this on audio as well because I think I got it on Whisper Sync. Has been on my Kindle forever. Mia Sheridan is another author whose backlist I'm trying to get through because Mia Sheridan, as you guys know, or may not know, wrote one of my all-time favorite books, which is Archer's Voice. I Mia Sheridan has been hit or miss for me when it comes to her backlist. I've liked more books than I've disliked, but I've really, really disliked one. I've been mediocre about a couple, and then I mostly, I loved a lot of them. So I'm hoping this is one of the ones that I really like. Again, not one that I'm really interested in like digging too much into what it's about, but I will look it up for the sake of this video. <laughs> because again, like since I'm reading her backlist, I don't really need to know what this book is about, but let's see if we can get a quick overview. Sounds like it's going to be another emotional one because it says a stunning heartfelt new stage standalone. It says Brant runs a glitzy network of high-end bars in New York City, so it takes place in New York City. I feel like Mia Sheridan books tend to take place in a small town. It could, oh wait, it looks like he may be going back to a small town in Kentucky because he learns that his estranged father is dying and he has to return to Kentucky. Okay, to a horse farm. All right, that makes sense. That sounds more Mia Sheridan to me. And then he collides with his father's secretary, Isabel. Despite his undeniable attraction to the beautiful independent young woman, he sees secrets in her eyes and believes she has designs on Greystone Hill. Now the one woman he can't afford to trust is about to become the one he can't let go. Interesting. I wonder, so it sounds like it might be like enemies to lovers situation. Excited to read that. Normally, I feel like not just with Mia Sheridan, but with most authors, it's usually the heroine who like w lives in the big city, works in the big city, and then comes back to the small town, but it's reversed in this case, so interesting. I wanna read, I wanna give you your flowers by ML Sexton. This is one that has been on my Kindle for freaking ever. So I'm obsessed with the cover of this one. It's freaking adorable. It kind of gives me like the Tasha L. Harrison small town romance series. It gives me those vibes. And so I think that's why I was drawn to this book because it reminds me of that. Also has pretty high ratings. The heroine decides to get in shape a few months after the tragic death of her ex-husband. So it sounds, oh, ex-husband. So I wonder if they were divorced before. Her best friend hires her a personal trainer. Oh, we were just talking about this. This is a personal trainer and a woman like trying to get into working out. So that's interesting. That's funny. We just talked about that. And in comes Andy, who also happens to be her teenage son's new football trainer. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> for a second, I was like, whoa, because I thought it was going to be her teenage son's football friend or something like that, like football player friend. I was like, what? But it's her teenage son's football trainer. And it says what she didn't expect was the big purr energy that Andy brings time and time again. Oh man, I'm excited about that one. That sounds good. And like I said, I love the cover of this. Another one I want to read is Along for the Ride by Mimi Grace. I've read... <sighs> The first book, I think this, is this the series along? I don't know if this is part of this same, no, okay, so it doesn't look like this is part of a series. I thought this was um, linked to the previous book that I've read by Mimi Grace that I really liked. So I'm excited to read this one. Um, this one I picked up because I like the author. I've only read one other book by this author, but I definitely want to, wanted to read more after I read this book. This one sounds like it's a road trip romance. I know some people don't like road trip romances for some reason, but I love them because it's like forced proximity. So I'm a big fan of road trip romances. It says, former hot mess, Jolene Baxter is committed to doing better. It's why she offered to help her sister and brother-in-law move across the country. However, her goodwill is tested when last minute changes. This is her to make the journey with a man who's a human version of a pebble in her shoe. So it's going to be enemies to lovers. I feel like enemies to lovers is so much better in a road trip romance when they have to kind of tolerate each other. I love that. I'm not going to read the rest of the synopsis. So that's all I need to know. My dogs are outside and I have to let them in because she's barking at the door. So we are going to have chaos in here in a second. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. I have a puppy next to me. I'm hoping that she will go to sleep. She's just laying here wagging her tail right now. <laughs> but anyway, okay. Um, let me show you a video of her right now. I'm gonna take it on my phone. She's keeping me company. She has her little fish to chew on. This used to be a whole fish, but they chewed the tail off. Okay. She's just laying on the bed with a very dirty collar that we need to replace. <laughs> you gonna sleep for me, baby? You gonna be a good girl? You gonna be a good girl? Things are looking good. Seems like she's going to sleep. That's lovely. Okay, next I'm going to read Forever Wild by K.A. Tucker because in, in a turn of events, I realized that I never read this freaking novella. I really pushed Steph to finish The Simple Wild and, or to read The Simple Wild. And then of course she ended up marathoning the series. I am telling you, Steph is known for marathoning series. Once, if she likes a series, she will just plow through. But I realized after talking to her, because she brought it up a couple of times, I was kind of thinking to myself, I'm like, oh my God, I don't think I read this last little novella in the series. I read the other novella that was part of this. There might have been two. I think it's just one. But I haven't read this one yet and I own it. I'm pretty sure I also have it physically as well. So I probably will read it like either on my ebook or physically, depending on how I have it. But I haven't read it yet. And I know it doesn't follow the same couple. I'm pretty sure it follows the girl who was in love with the hero from the first book. So excited about it. And it's also a novella. So quick to get through. This next book is a book that I've been wanting to read for a really long time. I've had it on my Kindle forever, but I've secretly been hoping that the author would be coming out with audiobooks for his books. However, I know that there was a little bit of a hiccup with the audiobooks that he was having produced for his books. And he's very, very adamant about having the right representation when it comes to narrators for the audiobooks, which I love. But of course, that's making it take a little longer. So I think I just want to read this one because I do have a couple of members who have wanted me to read this and they have voted for it or have nominated this book when it comes to the member's choice, but it hasn't been picked. But I do own it. I own the physical copy. I also own the ebook. So I definitely want to read it. And that's What Are the Odds by Arm Virtues. This one, I think, is a older sister's ex-fiance romance. Let me see. Yeah, when Caius, no, ex-husband. When Caius divorced my older sister, I never thought he would divorce me too. So she was best friends with him. So it's both friends to lovers and then also has that taboo ex aspect where he is her, her sister's ex-husband. <gasps> Sounds so good. I think that was the one that made me very interested in Arm Virtues. And then I ended up reading Drag Me Up first before this one, but oh my gosh, so excited about it. And then last but not least, I definitely want to read Heart Recaptured. It's Hades Hangman, book number two by Tilly Cole. I am not a big fan of motorcycle club romances. I tried Gianna Darling's series and I didn't love it because of the age gap. And it was very like a little too angsty for me, a little too over the top for me. Didn't love the age gap. And like every single book in that series was age gap. I only got to like two or three books in that series. So it's not really fair to say every single book, but I have heard she writes a lot of age gaps. So didn't love that series. Um, I did like the first book in the series. I think I gave it four stars, but I did want to move on. I am intrigued enough to move on. I don't love a lot of things 
in Motorcycle Club because they tend to be like there tends to be like a suspense aspect, which isn't my favorite. I don't like how the heroes talk about women or anyone, honestly. Yeah, Motorcycle Clubs normally aren't my thing, but since I did like the first book, I'm intrigued by this one. I do have audio for this because I got it on WhisperSync, so I have the ebook and the audio that I can go back and forth between. So yeah, so I'm going to be reading this one. Like I said, yes, this is Motorcycle Club, probably a dark romance because the first book was, and we'll see. I think this one will be the test to whether I move on in this series or not. It was a long time ago that I read the first book, so obviously I haven't been like obsessively marathon, like I didn't start marathoning the series, so I didn't necessarily love the first book enough to continue on with the series right away but I think this will determine whether I give up on the series or not. I know quite a few people really like this author and really like this series, so we'll see if it's for me. And that is it. Those are 10 books that I wanna read that are on my Kindle right now at this moment, and I'm gonna clear them out of my Kindle, hopefully maybe read a few more in November. If you want to join me in clearing out your Kindle, let me know and comment below what books you are planning to clear out from your Kindle in November. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, happy reading. Bye.